Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. Now, you may have noticed last time I went flying, which was January 2nd, so probably just a couple of videos ago, I took the laser with me, but I didn't get to fly it. And that's because I made a mistake. I made a mistake when I did all my pre-flight checks on this. If you watched that video as well, again, I'll link both these above and below. But when I did all the pre-season checks and checked all the model over, I decided to remove this little castle link tele telemetry unit. And that's what stopped me flying. So I'm gonna give you a quick update on that today and we're gonna fix it so I can go flying again. Let's roll the credits. Okay, so I guess the short version of this is, I took the model flying back on the 2nd of January, got it all set up, ready to go, everything plugged in, plugged the batteries in, did my pre-flight checks, always check the control surfaces, ailerons left, right, elevator, up, down, rudder, etc. all good. Opened up the throttle and nothing, nothing at all, throttle was dead. And I thought, that's odd, this model has been as good as gold since day one. And then I recalled that uh, over the Christmas period, I removed the telemetry system from the model because I wasn't using it, I wasn't listening to it, I wasn't doing anything with it at all. And I thought, I mean, it doesn't weigh anything, but I thought I'd just take it out. It's one less point of failure in the aircraft. So this plugs in line um, from the server wire coming from the ESC, plugs directly into that, and then one wire straight into your throttle channel, which is channel three, which I'm using on the Futaba. And then you've got a, a programming wire. So. I removed it and just plugged the ESC straight, straight into channel three. And I didn't check the model. And that's what I should have done. That's the mistake I made. I should, after removing it, I should have checked the model in the workshop. Well, try that again. I should have checked the model in the workshop, make sure it's all working. And I didn't do that. I checked the control surfaces, the elevator and rudder, because that's all that was plugged in at the time, but I didn't check the throttle. And that cost me a flying session. So like I said, I got to flying field and couldn't get the throttle working. Now the reason why is because on the Castle ESCs, you have to configure live link on or live link off, so it's enabled or disabled. And live link is basically telemetry. So live link data back to the receiver, back to the transmitter. And uh, you have to disable that once you remove the telemetry, otherwise your throttle simply doesn't work. Because I think it's because it's expecting SBUS signal rather than a normal signal. I think that's right. If you know a bit more detail about that, please put it in the comments below. So basically what we need to do is download the Castle Link software, get it connected, or get a wire connected from the laptop directly to the ESC, change that setting over, flash it back to the firmware, then it should work. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is download the Castle Link software, which I was saying, I'll link this in the description of this video, so you've got a link, but it's costcreation.com slash download castle link. Um, and it's the big blue circle, click on that to do the download. Now we'll just point out an absolute pet hate of mine is yet again, I say yet again, because I was reviewing another video the other day, and it was the same situation, but the software is only available for Windows. They haven't written a Mac version, which I think is pretty poor nowadays. A lot of there's a lot of Mac users out there, so it does say you need Windows 7, Vista, Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows 11, or Mac users can use an emulation software to download it. So just be 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 aware of that. If you're only a Mac user, you need to find yourself a PC like I've done here to uh, download the software. So click on download, get it installed. I think I've already got it installed on this machine, so I did it earlier today. So let's see if I can just load it up. Castle Link app. And there it is in the middle of the screen. So the other thing you need is the Castle Link programming kit, which is basically just a USB cable on one end. Let's pull it out. So it's USB connector on one end, standard PC stroke Mac connector. And then on the other end, it has a little bit of a little bit of magic, which is the Castle Link V3 connector, which connects into your ESC. 
So into the throttle cable off the ESC is what we're going to plug into here. So just unplug that, or if you still have the telemetry in place, you plug it into the spare port on the telemetry. We haven't got that. So let's uh, let's get this hooked up. We've got the software installed. Um, we'll get this connected to the laptop, get it connected into the plane, and I'll show you what setting is you need to change. Okay, to make this easier, I think what I'll do is just pull the camera off the stand quickly so you can have a look at what's going on here. Um, so, just about to see that? Yeah, that's better. So there's the Castle Link software. We've got the cable. Let's go ahead and plug in the cable into the USB. And you see the green light change there to USB connected because it knows it's plugged in. Let's check the other end of the cable. We've got that plugged into the model here. So this was just the throttle. So again, that wire goes, or well, we can't see it, I know, appreciate that, but it goes all the way through to the ESC. Um, and that's currently got a red light on it. So that light will go green, as will the software down there once the device is linked and connected. But the thing to note, the planes are on at the moment, with most ESCs, you will need to power up the ESC. So you will need to plug your main battery packs in, which is why I've got mine sitting there at the moment. So I can't do that while holding the camera. So let me put the camera down and plug that in. Okay, taking you back off the stand again just to show you something. So on the screen there, you can see that we're now linked to the bottom. And also what's quite nice as well is it said a new version of the firmware is available. Go to the software tab if you want to update the firmware. So that's referring to the firmware on the ESC. It's a little piece of software that controls all the ESC. I'm not gonna update that this time, so I'm gonna make one change at a time. Uh, I think that's just best practice to only change one setting, do one thing at once, test it, make sure it works, run, do lots of changes at once. In case you get a problem, it's hard to troubleshoot. So that's gone green, device is linked, and also, sorry about the background noise, but it's raining really hard outside at the moment. Also, the castle link here has also got a green light on it now. So let's face the camera at the screen so you can see it and I'll talk through it. Okay, so hopefully that's gonna be clear enough for you. I don't actually have any um, screen capture software on this laptop and it's not mine. So I'm just pointing the camera at the screen for you. So I'm just gonna okay that message about the firmware being available. And then we should be able to go through the settings now. So let's make the screen a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm not an expert by any means at this software. I've only used it a few times myself. But if I flick through some of the screens, you can just see a few different things you can do in here. Governor modes, all sounds good. Brake, so you can configure the motor to have a, let's click on that, there you go. A brake, so when you throttle back, come to idle, it actually slows the motor down quicker. Now, quick word of warning, I did try this on another castle ESC, and unfortunately, it blew up. It blew up in mid-flight, and I only had a small percentage of brake enabled on there as well. So I'm now very, very reluctant to change anything on here. And I have read a few forums say that a, was a common issue. Now, it might have been something that's been updated in firmware, but personally, I'm not prepared to try it. Let me just show you a couple of pictures of what happened to my last plane. Yep, yeah, definitely not good. I think you'll agree. But moving on. Cut-offs. Some preconditions there, limits when you're cut out, motor, etc. Other. So this is where we want to be. So believe it or not, it's this setting here, live link enable. So mine was enabled. So if you're using telemetry, so I'll come back to that warning message in a moment. But if you're using the telemetry system, 
which is just going to turn in front of the screen, this link here, you have to enable Live Link. Because basically what that's saying to your ESC, it's going to send more telemetry, or telemetry data down the wire. Um, so the S bus data really down the wire into the receiver, then the receiver transmits it to the transmitter. Now, if you've got S bus wire coming down, that uh, S bus data coming down, that's absolutely fine. But of course, if you, if you remove the telemetry, and this was my issue, you have to go into this software and you then have to actually disable it and turn it off. So it's back to standard. So the cable is plugged in without telemetry. So it's going to be sending normal control down there, which is just normal throttle control. And then once you've done that, oh, just disappeared off the screen there, bring it back. Once you've done that, you just hit update and it flashes those settings or sends those settings down the wire to the ESC and it's job done. It's as simple as that. So that's really, that two second change is what cost me a whole flying session with this model. The fact that I didn't test this in the workshop when I checked it over during the Christmas period. Um, I should have done really, it's my own fault, lesson learned there. And that's it, simple. Uh, what else in here? Login information, cool stuff. Software is where you go if you want to update the firmware. So it knows I've got a, a Edge HV120 ESC in this device and it knows I've got there's newer firmware out there. So I could go ahead and update the firmware. Again, I'm not going to do that. What I really want to do is just check the throttle's working in a minute with you guys. I want to go and fly the model, make sure it's all okay. Then next time around, I'll come back in here and I'll update the firmware. Um, but then part of me thinks if it's not broke, don't fix it. So let's uh, go back to the model. Now we flash this and let's see if the throttle now works. Okay, so I haven't changed anything yet. I've just moved the camera, zoomed right out. The model is actually on at the moment. Let's move away from the bench. So I've still got, I think you just about to see me in shot. I've still got it plugged in for a while at the moment. So what I want you to do is just gonna unplug that. So you hear the ESC then just run through its startup sequence, but it didn't initialize because I've still got the throttle unplugged. And that's the exact sound it was making when I was down the flying field last and I had this live link still enabled. It was all plugged in, it would do that startup sequence, but it wouldn't do the final couple of beeps to initialize. And that's how I knew something was initially wrong. So what I'm gonna do is just flick them all off for a second, plug in the throttle back into channel three I appreciate you can't see this, but that's where it is being plugged into. And then I'm going to turn the model on and hopefully we'll get the same set of beep sequence and it'll pause and then we'll get the initialized sequence, which means the throttle's going to work. Make sure everything's in the right positions. Turn it on. No, we didn't. That might be because the, the ESC was still powered up. So we just uh, turn it off again, pull the batteries. both batteries, replug the batteries in with the model on. That's better. So there's two lots of sequences there. So that's my normal startup procedure. Turn the model on, plug the batteries in. You get that initial startup, the pause, and then the second tone as well. And then the constant beep every 10 seconds to warn you that the model's powered up and on. So everything should work now. So let's just try the throttle. Just a couple of clicks. Perfect. Let's pull the battery for safety. So that was it. It was as simple as that, just that one setting could have saved me, well, could have got me flying, could have got me my six flights, which I normally do with this model when I take it. Luckily, I did take a secondary model with me. I always take at least at least two when I go flying, so I didn't waste my first session out. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check the link below or the card that's gonna appear at the top very shortly and check out that very first flying session of the year. So lesson learned, 
always worth double checking everything, especially if you're making any changes to your model. We've learned a little bit there about the castle link, the fact you have to turn live link on if you're using telemetry, and then make sure you turn it back off, otherwise your model's not gonna work again. Um, hopefully you found that useful, hopefully it saves you some time. Uh, please follow along the channel, we're doing more, or I'm doing more and more videos lately, aiming for about one a week. I've got a couple of models coming, and possibly a third model coming as well at the moment, which I won't talk about just yet. Um, I'm hopefully about to order my third. So we're gonna be doing build series on all those models. Um, they're a little bit special, bigger than this. I'm really looking forward to it. So follow my journey. See you next time round. Cheers.